And a 13. And what? It's Sunday, February 16th, 2020. I'm Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. And that makes me Gary. Don't hurt nobody with your bad self. And welcome to Comes Out Live, the Bear Podcast with Nature and Length, episode number 542. And... Oh God! Now I wish I had had the clip from Prince with a uh, from his uh, song from night. Uh, um, was it nineteen ninety nine? Yeah, I think it was nineteen ninety nine. No, was it ninety nine or was it a different album? Anyways, from his song "Controversy," because we're going to talk a little bit of co- about controversy, aren't we, Gary? I don't know if people would think it's controversial, but perhaps. I don't know. Everybody's in a panic. Mm, I don't think everybody's in a panic okay. now. To to be Slam fair, it, to be fair, we are gay, so we're just. Was making, it just a gay panic? Yeah, it, it, it's us just being dramatic about it. Ah! Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> What the fuck is wrong? Oh, we're, we're, man. We're what being overly dramatic about something that I think is... Eh. But, you know, It's a scandal, apparently. Well, I think it was a scandal. Okay. Okay. Well, okay, okay. to be fair, when this actually happened versus the now, time has passed. So there's something fair. to be said for the uh sit back and observe like see how things shake out fair kind of aspect of things fair 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 so if for some reason you did not pay any attention to the title of the show and you missed it in the title of the youtube like you know production like you just i don't know you just let it play you didn't let it click you didn't pay no attention then you have no idea what we're talking about uh, everything besides saying "Ooh, new episode comes out loud play. <laughs> exactly i haven't heard from these guys in i don't know how long so <laughs> uh yeah so we actually discussed this back when like all the hubaloo kind of blew up and then uh things happened and we took some time away because we had other things to do so yeah uh uh, over a year ago, we did a show called R.I.P. Tumblr Porn? Question mm-hmm. mark. And so here we are again, kind of. Only this time it's R.I.P. Growler? Question mark. Dun, dun, dun. So people were not happy when the announcement was made that Growler, the app, had been sold uh, for a multi-million dollar deal and that already caused a, a bunch of like you know rough fur out there so to speak because <laughs> that was back in March a year ago when the announcement was came out that um, it had been sold which I think that was bound to happen at some point you know Coley who created it had already had it for eight, nine years at that point, because I think he created it in like 2010. So it was, to me, it was just, that's what you do. That's what, that's what America does. It's a great American dream, isn't it? Like you build a thing and then you make money off of it. And then, you know, somebody else likes your idea and you decide to sell it to them because you're going to get paid lots of money for that. And then like you move on with your life. How much was it? It was like $11.8 million. Correct. That's what the quoted amount is that uh, the sale was for. Um, so, yeah, I mean, and to be fair, a lot's changed since it was originally, you know, created and, and you know, produced. I think the reason that this time around 
the the hubble you know the the blowout was because we had already known it had been sold the bigger issue was now there's even more butt hurt um mm-hmm. that's not really the right way to phrase it but there was a lot more like hurt feelings um because there was a dramatic change in the terms of service and everybody raised an eyebrow and was kind of like wtf wth mm-hmm. like um and like there was some faulty things that were pointed out about when the new TOS came out, and the big issue for I think a uh, like I'm gonna I'm gonna take a wild guess at least fifty percent of the outcry was that there was no opt out. Yeah, like there was no workaround. There was no ability to handle it. It was just simply here's the new TOS, accept it, or you can never use the app ever again. Essentially. And I think that's what really kind of set everybody's uh, and, jock straps on fire. And just for clarification, for those wondering, we talked about the Growler acquisition on episode COL 502 back mm-hmm. in March of 2019. And to kind of relate back to other things, we talked about the Tumblr rest in peace on COL 490. I was looking those up while you were speaking because I wanted to have those data points so yeah so basically about three months after tumblr makes the announcement and puts in into effect their no adult content stuff and we had hadrian on and we had a discussion about the fact that tumblr had been having issues for a while and changed ownership and so on and so forth and we all thought that this was probably not a good decision on their part because it was not only impacting just adult content like as far as you know um porn you know stuff that people like to share and debate to but more importantly there was a huge community of other quote-unquote that was represented that was going to be affected including a large significant portion of artists who made a lot of different items that were going to be you know kind of grouped together in this Mm -hmm. adult content concept So as we like to say, uh, there was a great exodus from Tumblr and most people went over to Twitter and then there's been some like upset over, you know, how Twitter has been supposedly going to do some crackdown and yada, yada. So, I mean, I think it's just part of the landscape of social media period that there will always be somebody who has interest in it and somebody who says, "Mm, maybe not. And Mm -hmm. if it's the, that person has the purse strings or the control, they may end up changing things, which upsets folks. So here we are with this whole change in terms of service. Mm -hmm. And I personally was really unhappy when it rolled out because I was in the camp of, I can't even get past this. Like I can't do anything in this moment. I can't message people. I can't delete my profile. Like I can't change my profile. Like there's nothing that could be done the way it had come out. Yeah. And I also had a conflict because, and I'm still not sure how I feel about this, in my new job capacity, my role could be something that I include in my profile. Because if you recall, we had Mario on as Prep Daddy, and he, you know, is in social media and owns that. Like, that's his, like, self-label, and that he, you know, is a prep navigator for... Folks that don't know, that's pre-exposure prophylaxis, which is, you know, um, the ability to have a service or, you know, uh, to do different things to prevent, you know, contracting HIV. So becoming a new disease intervention specialist for HIV Mm -hmm. and been going to training, my one of my responsibilities is about making sure that individuals who are either high risk or are positive, that they have access to services. And so I've been thinking about like putting this in my profile, but then this whole thing happens. And I was like, Whoa, Mm. I was like, now I don't even know how I feel about this because it's already a fine line between like personal and professional. And I've never really used the app a whole lot or really at all for quote unquote hooking up. Like I've legitimately used it as a social app to like, chat with people Mm -hmm. so i found the tos thing like quite alarming because i was like yeah well you know do i don't i keep it where do i stand on this what is my you know my convictions so to speak Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. So should we go go over the bullet points then? <laughs> like, let, let, let's talk about this. Uh, and, well, first off, uh, we have a Bear Magazine article, which kind of goes into a little bit of a reporting. It's, like, mm-hmm. it's, it's not like an extensive thing, but it does just kind of explain the situation. Uh, it shows uh, probably the big segment of the TOS that was changed um, which I feel like after reading both of them, that it's really a change of the words. Yeah. That's it. Because when I read it, it feels like, well, what they said in this previous one sounds okay, you know, quote unquote non threatening. And the other one sounds like, Specific legalese. <laughs> but when I parsed it, like just to myself, I'm like, well, that sounds like it's saying the exact same thing. Just different way of saying it. Yeah. So Jeff is talking about, so the Bear World magazine article has the 2014 terms of service. And keep, it, uh, and keep in mind. That was the last time that this that the terms of service was changed. <laughs> and there that's and the reason why it's important to note the date. I don't mean to cut you off, Damon. Is no, no, because no, no, no. the new owners of Growler, um, the uh, the meat group, the, the meat group, which is the name of the company, Meat M E E T. Um, their whole point was like the terms of service hadn't been updated in nearly six damn years. Mm -hmm. Which is actually quite surprising and shocking, like, when you think about how often you get app updates. And, like, I think there's a presumption that when the app updates come in, if the terms of service are changed, like, that that happens often. And in reality, all the app updates that happened with Growler were, like, in the software context, like, in terms of the coding, the features that it provided, some good, some not so good in people's opinions. Um you know, that that they were like, no, nope, we got to bring this in line. And, and they didn't quite say this, but I feel like it was, we have to bring this in line with everything there, everything else that we own. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, and, that being said. <laughs> yeah, so it says, um, I'm just going to read this verbatim because I think it's easier to do. Mm-hmm. So the 2014 Growler Terms of Service has stated under Section 15, when you become a member or user of the Growler app or the service, you agree to and consent to receive email messages or other forms of communication from us, including but not limited to email, telephone calls, or text messages, parentheses, including but not limited to SMS or MMS messages or other digital or mobile messaging services or applications. These, ooh, they didn't end that. Parentheses. Fuck that. I anyway. know. <laughs> I just caught that. I was like, fuckers. Anyway, I'm going to assume that it ended there. Whatever. Anyway, um, these emails or communications may be transactional or relationship communications related to the Growler app or the service, such as administrative notices and service announcements or changes, or emails containing commercial offers, promotions, or special offers from us, our third-party partners. And so, to be fair, that sounds pretty reasonable, right? Well, it, it essentially sounds like the app will talk to you in and give you emails, which I, is similar to just about every app that you subscribe to. Right, right. In and, some but, way, shape, or form. But when you listen to it and and, and uh, when, you're, when you read this, it's very non-threatening or anything. It's just kind of like informing you of the situation, right? Well, yeah. and, and, and I agree. Like, in what the 2014 wording comes across as, it's like you could get actual physical mail, okay? Telephone calls, text messages, or email about the app or service. And then, of course, right at the very end, it says, you know, some of this may also be about special offers or third, you know, third party partners, which, of course, the third party partners, I think everybody was like, "Mm, I'm not sure how sure how I feel about that. I think that's also part of the advertising platform. Yeah. Because technically, everything that's an ad within it is a third party. Thing. Like even if it's another event, like every time I logged in, it, it seemed like, especially if I didn't log in very often, I had a lot of messages that like those pop-ups, which were about you know, and URX, 
uh, you know, the white party, blah, 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 uh-huh. the bear cruise, like whatever it is. Like there was just a ton of stuff. Like, are you aware about, you know, prep, which I mean, as a person who got my new job, like I'm perfectly fine with all that. I usually just kind of closed them all and just didn't care. Um, I keep, never really felt like I was the audience for those. Keep in mind, Martin, the, what we just read here was the original terms of service that was last updated in 2014. Yeah, This is before the most recent update. Right. And, and to what Martin's saying, you know, basically they're selling your info to advertisers. That's kind of always been a thing. Yeah. Like, so in the article, Charger Stone from DC Bear Crew basically says... I think what I think is reasonable. He's like, I get that new owners of Growler are in the business to make money. I'm not naive to the fact that a lot of data is mined for sale from the apps we use. And it goes on. And I'm like, that's just the name of the game. Like, Mm -hmm. like there's no such thing as like full hundred percent privacy. So I think the bigger concern more than ever now is about the data that's captured and how it can identify Mm -hmm. us. No matter how much you sanitize it yeah. and, or, and to yeah. be to be fair in recent years probably like post 2014 people have kind of gotten more because of facebook um have become more aware of this sort of sort of thing being like hey wait a minute no and they step back and they're saying we need some privacy concerns and yeah. we have and we want some options and, and such like that most of the time um, and doesn't specifically say this, but most of the data is anonymized. Your PPI, your personally identifiable uh, information, is usually either stripped, removed, encrypted. It is from any of these. So you they get data about people, but mm. nothing to necessarily specifically identify those people. That makes sense? Right. Like, I understand that. The, I think the thing that people are concerned about is like how you can take all the different bits of data and collectively still composite who is Damon. I don't know what Damon's name is, but I know that he is X years old. He is most likely this ethnicity. He likes these things. You know what I mean? Because of all the places that we visit online, the things that we buy, the things that we do. Like, so it's it, sure it's all random sanitized data and it's, you know, been stripped of the the privacy. But the reality is it's like, well, if you take everything into account, all the different types of apps and social media, you know, websites that you visit, all that stuff. You can still figure out who, who an individual is. I th- I feel so. I don't think that the 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 terms of service were egregious. Yeah, um, yeah. Which now, brings which, us to twenty twenty. Twenty. Whatever. Which is causing everybody to freak out. So, a majority of this text, just so I'm kind of because you can't really see it as I read it. A majority of this text is in capital letters. So, um. So in caps, it says, you consent to receive commercial email, text, SMS, and or other messages from us and agree that we may use your email address, phone number, and other personal information for the purpose of initiating commercial messages. End of uh, capital letters. And then it goes, receiving these communications, yeah, receiving these communications, possibly via auto dialer, is a condition of using Growler and you will not be able to opt out of receiving them. End. And, and to be fair, the probably what's mostly uh, uh, causing the freak out is the part that's not in caps. Is <laughs> the right. fact that that oh, I could get on an automatic dialing system, and uh, uh, I can't opt out about it. Which I'm curious to know whether or not this is legal, because I think there's a sticky legal situation here, and here's why. Because Preface, there's actually we are not do- lawyers. No, I know. I, I just well, I just want to put I that know. we are not legal experts. That's I just true. want to preface that for our own sake here. But here, but here's the here's the reason why I think about it, or at least it can be confusing to people because there are do not call registries that yeah. your number cannot be called 
Now, technically, the way those work is if you give permission for your number to be used, then there's nothing you can do about that. Because this is something I had to deal with my parents. They were like, I keep getting all these phone calls. I don't know why I'm getting them. And I was like, well, you must have given your number for something. I don't give my number out for anything. And I was like, mm, OK, you don't quite realize that <laughs> what you have to use your number for to be able to get things. Fair. So, like, if you sign up for a pharmacy, like, app to be getting texts and alerts and stuff like that, you probably had to give your phone number. Well, now, mm -hmm. if you didn't read the terms of service, you probably gave permission. So that's where I think this comes a little confusing. It becomes sticky because technically the new terms of service says that you will not be able to opt out of receiving them. And I'm like, hmm, I think that's where a lot of pants were on fire. And on top of it, people were like, auto dialing? Yeah. Like, I think they were trying to cover their butt because it says possibly via auto dialer. Mm -hmm. So I don't think it means they're going to, but I'm kind of like, uh, how's that yeah. going to work? Like, in it's, terms of the of the app calling? Yeah. And, yeah, I, <clears throat> I've been very, like, you know, so I will own because I am dumb. <laughs> I got on my app on the 21st when they updated the terms of service. I clicked on it, and I honestly will admit I'm one of those people that did not fully read it. And I just moved on because I just wanted to get, I wanted to get in the fucking – yeah, I wanted to get in the fucking app. I wanted to look at, like, the people and like, talk to people. I'm just going to own. Like, I, like, that's all I wanted to do. Like, you know, you, you I, I'm sure there are uh, – In over 90% of the people who use <laughs> – any sort of I'm app sure or any of, well, sort of thing which so, uh, involves a TOS. I'm not going to say this is you, David, but I think there's a lot of people who were like, what is this barrier to me getting dick? <laughs> I mean, move on. Essentially, move on. yes. I agree. Yeah, I mean, that's, for a lot of people, I'm sure that was part of it. And for, But for me, it was, you know, I really just wanted to get in because I think, I, you know, I think I had a message or something uh, for someone I haven't talked to for a while. Anyway, so I moved on. And as soon as I did that, like within... 10 15 minutes on Facebook I'm getting all this shit like oh my god what the what the fuck is going on with Growler and 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 did you read their terms of service and I was like shit like what the fuck did I just agree to <laughs> so going you know but now going through it and reading like seeing these back to back like one of the things I will say so the like Jeff you were saying earlier mm -hmm. they're pretty freaking similar in some ways, like basically you by using the app, you're agreeing to get you can get some of these things. You're consenting to getting emails, text messages, calls potentially from the app is what I always believe it to say. And I think even with the other part of it, the new terms of service for me, as I'm looking at it now, looking at them back to back, the only difference is this whole like possibly via auto dialer thing and again the also the the opting out like unable to opt out kind of thing which uh, i wouldn't be surprised if essentially in the previous terms of service both of the or at least the opt out uh out thing was probably true because they don't mention anything about opting out mm -hmm. or or opting in or anything like that. Yeah. So the because they, they don't, they didn't say that. So that's one thing that they probably needed to update the terms of service is if that was the case, they needed to update that so that it was actually in there instead of not being there. Yeah. All it's because like, it does say you agree to these things, period, flat out. You agree to these things. It's basically saying yeah. you're opting into these things. If you're agreeing to this terms of service, yeah. And it seems weird and the agreement and, and that's the thing. Like I agree with you, Jeff. It is I think even in the twenty fourteen, you were opting in and you didn't really have an option to opt out because in order to use the app you have to agree to the terms of service. Which most likely back in twenty fourteen nobody was reading or very little number of people were yeah. actually reading so i shouldn't so, say nobody because <laughs> i'm sure there's somebody that reads every single word of every single terms of service by the way yeah. i have i will have linked in the show notes here the current 
terms of service. And one thing that people should also be looking at, the privacy policy. The yeah. terms of service doesn't specifically, it broadly mentions the privacy policy, like it references it, but it doesn't actually go into the details that a privacy policy would be. Mm -hmm. So really, you if you're going to read the terms of service, also read the privacy policies. Yeah. So. And it's fair because I don't think the term, like the terms of service, I think it actually has, it mentions there should be a link to the privacy policy. So again, while you agree to the terms of service, you definitely need, don't need to agree to the privacy policy because it's, it's usually something that is part of the whole package. Yeah. If they're making you aware of what's and happening with in service. the terms of service itself, there is a link to the privacy policies, the profile guidelines and the safety guidelines. Mm -hmm. So uh, while we were talking, because we did put in the link to the terms of service that was last updated January 21st of 2020, which is why it's been a month. I was talking about earlier about like the passage of time. So I'm curious because I'm double checking like, because something caught my eye in the quote, and this is just bare world mag, and this isn't like giving him shade or whatever, but in the italicized like lowercase section, they misspelled Growler, the product name with a capital R at the end. And I was like, wait, did the client, like, did this company actually do that? Like, they don't even know how to spell <laughs> their own damn name. But uh, like, I understand if it's all capitalized, because that's like the, all of the text is going on. But no, I actually found the the section regarding that. So... Um, in the in the current terms of service, the one that was updated January twenty first, right? Uh, the the R is lowercase. It is, and then so I was going through and looking so at like a typo before <laughs> section fifteen, which I find interesting because it's about communications and test profiles. It says when you become a member or user of the Growler app or the service, you agree and consent to receive email messages or other forms of communication from us, including but not limited to mail, telephone calls, or text messages, which I think this must be the old portion. So what I find interesting is like the older information is there from back in 2014, and then all the new stuff or amendment, quote unquote, is up at the very top. And I'm like, huh. Interesting. Yeah, I think there's some additional verbiage in there, unless yeah, uh, unless the part that's uh, referenced in the uh, Bear World article, um, Bear World Meg article, um, was only a section of that part and not the full thing. Yeah, because I agree, because it says, please see the company's privacy policy for more information regarding these communications. From time to time, employees of the company or its parent or affiliated companies may create test dating profiles for the purpose of testing functionality of our service and Growler app processes to improve service quality for our members. Telephone calls between you and customer service representatives may be recorded, recorded for quality assurance purposes. Mm -hmm. Which is typically the case for customer service calls. Yeah. Sure. But of course, we have to disclose it just because you know legal things. You need yeah. To that so being recorded. So this is you know the thing that we're facing was this last item that we discussed to kind of rehash it, which is you know there isn't an opt out. You kind of have no choice. Uh, so I can see why a whole bunch of people kind of got bent out of shape. Um, because they felt like, you know, there's nothing that can be done about this. Like either you just stop using the app completely, don't agree to the terms of service. And I saw a great many people like say, I sent emails, I, you know, messaged, I called and basically told them flat out, like, which notably nobody said they actually talked to anybody. It was that, which is another reason why, like the bear community was lit on fire because people were like, oh, there's nobody to talk to. Like, mm. nobody to get a hold of. Like, you're just sending stuff out into the void. You don't even really know what's happening. But a lot of people that were decided, for those that decided to leave, they were like, there's not even a way to guarantee that my profile is going to be deleted and that I get my money back and that I'm canceling my subscription. Like, all of this stuff, like, just kind of blew up mm -hmm. Yeah. within the first couple days of, you know, when this happened. Yeah. There was a exodus. I know several friends um, who chose to leave the app entirely after the news. Um, 
And so for those that don't know, I was at NAB this weekend, uh, North American Bear Weekend, and there was, I mean, cons- there was a, there was a lot of like conf- talk about like Growler, like a little bit here and there, mm. essentially about like some people are on the app and some people have chosen to leave the app and are telling them you know why they chose to leave the app. Um, some have not been on the app for a while for other reasons because you know. Um, well, let's just put it like this. So after the acquisition back in March, there were there have been and continue to be technical issues. Mm-hmm. Um, the app is slower than it wasn't before. It's um, had issues with um, losing messages. It's had issues with, um, oh, God, with so much, like, spam um, ads, um, people, like, making fake profiles and... Um, like sending links to other, you know, you know, um, other sites that are obviously meant to be spam. Um, and for a lot of people, it was enough. It was more than enough. And it, cause I know for a fact, like not too long after it first started, I was getting a spam ad from a blank profile, like once a day, at least, if not twice a day. Mm. And it, it, it's and I mean you still get them every now and then, but for the most part, it was just like I'm getting a lot of these, and I when before I wasn't getting them hardly at all, if I if I can remember correctly. So I think a lot of people have gotten a little mad or upset about the product since the meat group took over it, and that. This new thing is probably yet another reason for people to leave to to, to just go ahead and leave. Um, yeah, but t- to be fair, I don't think that's necessarily an issue because of Meat, meat Group purchasing it. It's just because this could have happened without the Meat Group purchasing it either. I, so I I, I understand mean, it is, that it, it is a concern. It, yeah, it's. It's a it is is something to be uh, consider about, but I don't think this would be in relation. To, I I don't th- I don't th- I think it's I don't think there's a correlation between the two. I think it's just a thing. It's just more people saying hey, uh, and it could also be the meat group got it and said like, oh meat group has a new ad that we can spam on, so let's let's get this one and start spamming on that one too. Um, it's so it, it, I don't think, I, I, I think it's just, it's starting to get worse because I'm getting, I'm getting auto dollar calls about insurance, like all the time yeah. and I don't even need insurance. I got it through work. <laughs> I'm talking, I was talking more along the lines of just the app in and of itself, what's mm-hmm. going on in the app. There have been a lot, like, I'm not going to talk about like all the stuff I've gotten like all those other things. But like for me personally mm-hmm. and what I've seen before, there were a lot of issues with the app like working and it's there are still technical issues going on with it. It's even mentioned in the article that there are still technical issues and they're working on them. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, I know. I think the app just in general needs a complete rewrite. Uh, just because it, of how old it is. And right now uh, any updates are probably just updating the current code and they need to start fresh um and uh, to get a m- more modern uh application I well think and that, that has be been of it. that has been one of the complaints i've heard from people talk about and they kind of like dog on growler and they're like oh this is such a lovely vintage blah 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 your code and this and that and it could really use some you know refreshing and this that and the other thing which those people that have those kind of comments, I was like, bitch, you stepping up to the table? Are you offering your services? Have you put in an application in your resume with a CV? <laughs> I'm not really sure about that. Because if you're that damn passionate and vocal about it, then why don't you do something to change it? Yeah. Oh, that's right. Crickets. That's what I thought. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, I'm, I I understand that people have, like, criticism, but it's like, if, like, are you giving the feedback? Are you contacting them and saying, you know... Like this really, you know, requires this kind of like technology update or whatever. Um, So, yeah, I mean, I I don't I recognize that it's not perfect. Hell, like just this past week, like I log in 
And immediately I get two messages from two different accounts instantly. And I mean instantly. Like I haven't even done a single thing other than log in. And I was like, oh, all right. And I click and then sure enough, it's spam. Go to this website. Yeah. So I was like, okay, report, account, spam, send. Report, account, spam, send. Is it annoying? Yes. But I did it because I was like, y'all need to know that this shit's still going on. Like this bot stuff, it, it got to come to an end. Yeah. And I will admit as a person who has paid for a subscription, I'm like, this is what I would like to stop because I'm paying for it. Not that it should be a matter of like everyone sure. should have to deal with it if they can't afford it. I think the 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 bot spam shit should just be stopped across the platform. Right. Period. Whether or not you pay. Yeah, true. And and that's the thing. It's hard to say. Like, again, what can you do? You know, there's only so much you can do. And everyone knows that. You know, I mean, every just to put it out there, like a lot of apps have spam, and you can try to get away with it. Like, I'm just I'm gonna put it like right now. I play fucking words with friends. On my phone, and I've been playing that for years. And recently, again, recently, I've noticed I get like random player requests from random people who I don't know. And it's, well, I would like it was always a woman. <laughs> and it's been like for, for a few of them, it's been the same woman. So I'm kind of like, hmm, like, like the picture is the same person. So it's kind of like, why why are you asking to game with me because obviously you probably want to you're probably spam and you probably want to send messages to me which you know sorry i'm not going to really pay attention to those messages i'm looking to play the game yeah so for goodness I sake i i get the same thing on skype yeah you know i haven't like <laughs> granted i haven't been on skype in <laughs> i'm usually not on three skype weeks I <laughs> yeah i haven't been on skype in three weeks so um but uh, again it's so just to kind of put it in an overall perspective, it's a lot is happening. And I think what's happening now is a lot of us are more aware. Facebook was a big one where there was a lot of like issues with data privacy and and selling your data and selling that information and all of that. And now, you know, we're getting things like I'm getting caught, you know, we all are getting I'm sure we're all getting random calls to our cell phones from like spam or auto dialers companies. or insert, you know, whatever. And that, you know, I mean, I've gotten, I've gotten asked for car insurance and I'm kind of like, um, I ain't got a car. I've gotten requests for college loans. Um, I've paid off my college loans. Hallelujah. Um, <laughs> And so, like, <laughs> Gary's like, like lucky you. Uh -huh. <laughs> but like, yeah, but like, so like, those are things that I've, I've, you know, like it. I get those calls and they get deleted and then they get blocked because that's just the way it is. And I've, it does it suck? Fuck yes. But it's I think it's becoming the new norm, and it does suck. But that's what it is. It's becoming a new norm. We're going to be getting calls from someone because we have Facebook. We have. Amazon, we have whatever, and somewhere someone is selling that data. We know this, right? Mm -hmm. Like, everyone should know this. Like, no matter what, if you're using something somewhere, your data is being used, whether you want to admit it or not. Like, even if it's just getting the same promotions from the same company that you sold, you gave your added information to, you're still getting that information to from somewhere. I mean, right. just, just look up the terms of service for any site or service that you use. You're probably going to see some similar terminology. Now, some sites are, have gotten uh, uh, good about uh, their privacy policies, ability to opt out of certain things. And giving you those uh, uh, controls, uh, Facebook has done some steps to to help you with that. So there are there are things, but this is pretty common. What I really want want to uh, 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 speak to everybody about is this isn't as bad as you think. 
you, the, your concerns are completely valid and it is there is problems but in general a lot of this is we put this in here because we are required to by various laws and we have to use this type of verbiage so so that we've got we've cya we we've, we've covered our own ass for these things so that if something like this should come up hopefully in some cases don't then we're covered it, is there things that they should do to help change it so that they don't think such as like some opt-out controls about uh, some of the information that can be passed on uh, to to partner companies um, and uh, uh, something to allow us to see more specifically as to what data and what and being able to control what data can be shared sure we would love that is that easy no <laughs> I'm not a programmer, but I don't suspect any of that would be something that's very easy to do, which is one of the reasons why they use this terminology. And as I said, between the 2014 terminology uh, verbiage and the current added ver verbiage uh, to, the, uh, 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 to, to the terms of service, it's pretty much the same thing. So you have agreed to this for over six years <laughs> and just think of it this way is if you're freaking about this now why didn't you freak out about this back in 2014 when was well, the last time they they had changed it um, i think that's i, think I just think this... that all i'm really trying to do here is you need to calm the fuck down <laughs> no it's not as I bad as you think jeff no 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 it's as bad as people want it to be in their own perception. The key issue, I think, honestly, is this auto dialer thing where it says that you mm -hmm. will not be able to opt out of receiving them. That, I think, is what really set everybody off because that was not previously in the terms of service five, six years ago. Right. I think that's mm -hmm. where everybody lost their shit and was like, hold up, like, you're going to call me and I get no choice on this? Are you serious about mm -hmm. this? Because everybody feels empowered in a digital age that they can agree or opt out of things and this clearly says nope you don't get a choice suck it up mm -hmm. buttercup like this is just the way it is yeah so I, I i can almost guarantee this is uh, that's canned verbiage from something i don't know i'm, I'm not that's the, fine the, it could be canned just, verbiage all anybody wants the live long which is day, one of the reason why they but it to wasn't it to make sure in that there in previously there. right so now that it's in there is the reason why people got upset about it because they were like yeah, because we, we have we have a company and, that deals with this like a company that deals with this because previously it was just like what two people that had created the app that the, the creators were of the app and were managing the app well okay so your your point is taken about how it's like a transition and like there were things that mm -hmm. were bound to change with that that came with the new ownership i understand that but like and i think the thing that's being lost is part of what wes have been quoted in for um, Western Exposure and Bears on the Prowl. Like, I, Wes has a really big quote that's in this article that um, what I found interesting was he basically talks about how this is a, an incredible tool for the bear community. It was built by us, and now this just seems like we've turned into money grab. Like, we're not really being understood and honored from within our own community, which I found interesting because there was a comment about how – the management team, many of whom are also users of Growler, I was like, oh, so how interesting is that? My question is, how many people are on the management team? Can we have an actual number? Is it like two? <laughs> is it five? Is it 15? Like, mm -hmm. come on. Like, let's get that out there. You know, and when you say many of them are users, what, like nine out of 10 are users? Like, I don't, I don't understand. Like, that was just a little odd the way it came across. But the thing is, is that I think people who build something from the ground up like and they have a natural buy in because they're supportive because it's one of our own. I think what really pisses people off is when suddenly you don't get to be involved in the decision making anymore, which is bound to happen technically when it gets sold to another company, whether you like it or not. You know, you don't really have a say. You might have not had much of a say before, but now it's much more apparent mm. in 
the language that's being used. And so, you know, I, I kind of feel like mm, you didn't give anybody an opportunity to have a public forum about this, like to understand it. And you really kind of failed on the communication mm-hmm. side of things to give people an opportunity to like air grievance and have a discussion about it. Now, granted, this is not local policy and legislature. It's not legalities in terms of like, you know, what's happening as an ordinance where you live. Mm -hmm. So I'm not expecting a town hall in that aspect, but I can understand where people feel like, you know, I've been supportive of this and, and what Coley created all these years ago. And now I feel like that's so far disconnected. I mean, and this goes back to a conversation that someone had with me years ago about bear runs. And I haven't forgotten it because they said something very interesting. They said, they predicted in the future that all bear runs would be put on by corporations. And the concept of a small group of people putting on an event will die off. And it will be nearly impossible for anybody to do a bear run, specifically a bear run is what the topic was, without it being an entity like a corporation. And I was really kind of balked by that. Like I was like, what are you talking about? But I understand it because in order to be successful and to continue, you have to evolve. You have to turn into a legal entity. There's arbitration clauses. There's litigation. I mean, there's all these things that you have to be ready for and aware of. And so it becomes a matter of like your knowledge and how comfortable you are with that knowledge. And I think that's really what we experienced a month ago Mm -hmm. was all of a sudden – People started taking out the magnifying glass and reading through all the TOS, which we never seem to do. And then they were like, oh, oh, hold up. What, up, what is this business? Like, no, 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 no. I do, I do not consent. I do not agree to this. Mm-hmm. And I mean, and I think that's another big thing that actually Joe Guy brought up in the in the chat. He said, quote, unquote, consent is my business practice. Um, and I think that that's another aspect of this is like, like we didn't get a choice in the terms of service change, like how to address it or deal with it. Like, and that was the part I think that was bothersome was it was a, it was an automatic shutdown of the app. Like you could do nothing or you had to agree. There wasn't an in between, like, I disagree. I do not consent. And you could still get into the app and then you could, contact customer service you could delete your profile you could request to stop your subscription like they could have done a lockdown of dang near everything within the app except for very specific things but they didn't even allow you to do that you just you had no choice you just had to take it no matter what yeah or or find another way around to communicate with them which is where i think everyone really kind of got more pissy those that were trying to leave so just because um Dogai asked, do you need a phone number to sign up for Growler? Just sort of things it does in order for it to be used. I was trying to figure out what it get you what you give the app permission to use on your phone. I guess you because you do need a phone in order to use it. Like there's not really a way around like not having to use a phone. But it does it does need your camera, it does read your contacts, it know it needs to know your location. Um, so it has access to your GPS, it has access to your microphone. Um, storage, and then I'm looking at the other, and it says... I, I think there's see. some of those that you can un, can opt out on. Yes, like, there are I, some I that you can opt out Yeah, on. like the, the contacts, it asks you for it, but you mm-hmm. don't have to. Uh, and yeah. Save for the microphone and camera. Yeah. Obviously, camera's probably uh, uh, more often something than somebody would, would do to so that they can snap selfies and stuff to to send to people. Mm-hmm. Uh, microphones probably uh, much less often, although I think it has a video call function now or something. So that's where it did. Yeah, I mean it does. I'm sure I yeah. don't. I've never used it. So that's when it would would need it, but it only asks for for that when it, it asks you for that. So you, those are are things that you can opt out out of for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, if you read the po- privacy policy, do keep in mind that you may delete your account at any time and your personal information will be deleted in the normal course of business pursuant to our current data retention practices. We request to have all your personal information deleted by contacting support at growlerapp.com. 
We will comply with all deletion requests to the extent permissible by law and will not delete data that is legally required to maintain. And I think that was part of the beef that some people had as well is you couldn't even get to that stuff. Like if you were savvy enough, I guess, or thought about it, you just did a web search online and basically found out you go to growlerapp.com and you found the website. And then from there, you can find the FAQ, the privacy, the terms of service, how to contact them, like all that stuff's kind of there. You just had to think in a different way about how to out reach out to them because the app was basically put into lockdown without agreement to the new TOS or the update, I should say. So, yeah. I mean, and I, I, I'm still kind of like mixed about it and you know there's so i'm gonna say this and i don't know if this will be controversy or not so i have access to the app on my phone i did not have access to the app on my phone for about a week when this happened and the terms of service changed i went in and would open the app and it would always show up immediately as the tos and you like had to agree or not and i would just close the app because I couldn't move past it. And then after about two weeks, I think it was, I opened the app and then the terms of service didn't appear and hasn't appeared yet since. Hmm. Which I found very odd. Now, in the meantime, this article had come out and there had been some like comments and postings online about how like management was made aware they this wasn't the word but i think people feel like you know they uh, that it was understood that they miscalculated how they updated the terms of service um blah 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 so i don't know if they kind of like are doing this whole like circle around the wagons thing at greller headquarters if there is such a thing um there, there you could know, have also been like, they're like, oh, wait a minute, the terms of service hasn't been updated and we need to update it for various reasons. Uh, so, copy pasta. Copy pasta? Yeah, copy paste. I understood it, I just never heard that yeah. before. And they didn't actually um, like look through and be like, oh, no, we don't need this part. This part's not supposed to, don't need it that there or something. And they just have it. Now they're. And now it could be that they're like, okay, we need to like break this down and review this entire thing <laughs> and make sure we get it correct and spelling mistakes. Okay. So this just goes to show how this stuff is not technically updated accurately. Yeah. And here's why. So if you go into Growler guidelines and you go to the bottom, it says web link. It says a link to your Facebook profile is allowed in the Facebook field. MySpace, Twitter, and YouTube links are allowed in the about field. And I was like, MySpace? Are we are we serious about this? We still list in MySpace? Uh, my, I think MySpace actually still exists. <laughs> Just like, hey, like we gotta update yeah. the terms of service. I'm thinking there's other things we should probably be looking at and updating too. Yeah, Just MySpace saying. still exists. I, I think it's very reformatted, but also, interestingly, the Growler safety guidelines, when you go through and read them online, haven't been updated since July 29th of 2014. So I haven't got to that one yet. <laughs> well, that's kind of my point is like maybe slowly over time they'll be doing stuff. There's something else I wanted to say about this that I found very curious. So I was thinking about this whole auto dialer thing. And then I remember back when the announcement was made that they were sold and everybody was having a freak out about this. And everybody started investigating uh, the meat group and what do they do and what do they have. And like there was all this like backflack about how one of meat groups things they were looking forward to bring into mm -hmm. Growler was live video chat. And people were like how, thinking then about the spam issue and they were like, seriously, yeah. the last thing I want is one of these damn sex cam account like bot things popping up in, in the app or whatever. So I kind of wonder if the auto dialer falls under that. Like, and mm. I'm just, I'm just posing this as like a, as a curiosity of like, if you are agreeing to the current terms of service, how you uh, handle that kind of thing. If that is something that's going to come about in the future is this, you know, kind of for lack of a better reference, like FaceTime, Skype, whatever you want to call it, like video chat 
mechanism, which I think will probably come out only to people who are willing to pay for it because um, they gotta they got to cover the coin yeah, of the data yeah. somehow. A premium uh, uh, a sub- uh, feature. Mm-hmm. Right. So, I'll be, I mean, I'll be curious to, to see how that all plays itself out. But I was like, hmm. So I kind of wonder if this um, communications auto dialer thing, like if that comes into part of it or not, it's really difficult to say. And I don't think, and if they're, if, well, if they are smart about it and there is going to be an auto dialer mechanism, they should wait a really long damn time before they turn it on. Because the moment it happens and it goes live, I guarantee this article, perhaps this episode of our podcast, like all these things will come out and people will be like, see, see, I told you. I knew it was going to happen. Just saying. <laughs> yeah. People going to lose their mind over it. Fair. So yeah, I mean, I, and, so and, and maybe here's... maybe there's also something uh, they need would might want to do is, is be like frequently asked questions about the terms of service. Here's what this specific thing. Uh, what do you mean by auto dialer? You know, and then they go, auto dialer is actually when you select somebody to call on your phone or or to do a. A voice or video call it will dial it will dial you through the app and that's automatic so you don't have to like type anything to do it just select the person or i don't know they they may have some clarification being like no it's not really like an auto dialer like a, a, a spam call auto dialer system uh it's or, or it i mean for all i know maybe it could also be something where if they need a call because of customer support or something and they're doing like a callback it's using the auto dialer system to automatically dial to you in order to answer your call because auto dialers like uh, for example um, uh the loan companies uh when they're calling you for collections saying hey you're past due on, on your loan how can we would you like to make payment? Do you want to make a payment plan sort of thing? That's on an auto dialer, but that's not a spam call because you already have a business relationship with them in those cases, but that is an automatic dialing system that they use in order to call you. So that's another way, way of thinking. That's what they could mean by auto dialer. Do we know? No. All it says is auto dialer. So, I mean, there, there's ways where it's like, we don't know the specifics on what this specifically means that and for the most part from my perspective is they're probably i'm feeling like they're putting this verbiage in because they're required to Mm -hmm. and because of the way that they're required to have this uh, this type of uh, terms of service it sounds scarier than it actually is so I, I decided to go snooping around the FAQs just for shits and giggles mm-hmm. um, because I was like, oh, when was the last time any of this stuff? OK, so the majority of the FAQs on the website are from 2014, just so you all know. Uh, some are from 2016. The newest one, though, was modification the question, how do I delete my Growler account? And that was on January 28th of this year. Now, it doesn't show you like the history like of the modification. Now it simply says, if mm-hmm. you would like to delete your Growler account, you can do so by navigating to the main menu in the app and then selecting profile. Scroll down to the bottom of the profile page and select delete my account. Account information cannot be recovered once deleted. It is bold and underlined that last sentence. And that's pretty yeah. much all it says. So uh, again, for our visual listeners, our visual watchers, uh, yeah, it's right there. If it'll nope. load up, if it'll oh, there it go, there oh, it goes. Yeah. So yeah, there's a nice little delete account, lock pro- mm-hmm. private media, and clear cash. And clear cash. So so they're there. Yeah. And I mean, I just want to make sure people know, like that is there. Um, a lot of people when it first, when everything first happened, they're all like, "Well, fuck! How do I even delete my profile? I don't even know how." Well, it, it is there now. Granted, this is today. January or February 16th, 2020. Was it there 
Um, I, I think it was. Did, I, ha, I, I, I think, think there, it was. Yeah, it, it may not have looked exactly how it looks right now, but I'm pretty sure, and this is usually the case for, for most places with profiles, is that if you go into your profiles or settings uh, uh, for a site or app and you want to delete your account, usually that's where it is. So if you have no idea so, where it is and you never look there, well, that's not my fault. <laughs> So here's your random factoid about Growler, because mm. now I'm just snooping through all the FAQs. Mm. Question, how long does Growler keep messages? Answer, once you retrieve a message from Growler, it is permanently deleted from our system within 30 minutes and exists only on the sender and the receiver's devices. So your messages will always be available on your device until you delete them or the application is deleted from the device. Hmm. Hmm. I never knew that, and I find that very intriguing. That you send a dick pic to somebody, it only exists for a half an hour, and then it's gone. Only on the two devices. So make sure if you want to save those, to save them to your photos <laughs> just for good measure. Hmm. Which I believe it notifies the other person. Is it this app or a different app? There might be a different app. Because I know I used an app and I saved the person's image and I got called out on it. Because the person actually said, I'm Not glad you like my, my picture. picture so much that you saved it. And I was like, holy and shit. I <laughs> <laughs> and I oop. <laughs> exactly. I mean, it, it's quite possible that he, he literally was flattered and and didn't care that you saved it so I mean, no, <laughs> based I, off the verbiage honest, that he said it hopefully that's I, the case i i know that like that's the thing that, that i knew they were being honest i was shocked that apparently a notification came up on the other device on their end that the image had been saved by the person that they gave access to and i was like oh i was like that's cool and crazy so mm -hmm. growler Coley, if y'all happen to pay attention to this episode and you got this for before we're getting pissed off at our opinions, um, that should be something you should consider if it's not already active. Plus and I, um, also, if that's no longer the case, since uh, uh, make sure you're updating your facts. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, anyway, uh, needless to say, Growler needs. Growler in general needs uh, uh, a bunch of updates, and one of the things they started with was with the TOS getting along the lines with the Meet Group's other apps, and then uh, they probably actually just need to kind of like do a read through and also uh, start addressing concerns. And it could be some things where you're like, okay, maybe we do need some sort of opt out thing. Uh, I'm sure there's part of this they may not there might be some things that you may not be able to opt out of uh, without ha completely being like, well, you d we need to do this if you're going to have an account. Yeah. So, so you can opt out, but um, and making it more visible, but it may be engineering wise might be uh, more of a challenge than we think. Uh, I don't know about you two, but I'm definitely not a programmer, so I don't know how hard it is or difficult to update those things to do that. So right now they may be working on addressing those concerns. They just don't have anything to really let you know about. Of course it would be nice if they you no, know, maybe even uh, put up some sort of like blog post or something saying, Hey, so we know about these concerns. We are working on it. We don't have an ETA in, on it, but here's some of the ideas that we're coming across. But it, it, they may not be saying anything because they don't want to make promises that they may not be able to even do. So, well, and yeah. I think that maybe like one of that maybe one of the key issues that people have is they feel like like they we don't have any opportunity to voice anything. I mean, technically, via the app, mm -hmm. I think rate us, refer a friend. Nope, not looking like it. I don't really see. I'm looking under help. No, and the help is the thing I was just reading. There, there doesn't really seem to be a way to like, other than to rate through the through the store that you bought that you got the app from, quote unquote. There isn't really a way to communicate back to the programmers and stuff. Do you know what I mean? And I think that's been kind of one of the beefs over the years because people were like, "Why do I need some of this?" Like, 
Is it still even in here anymore? Did they take it away? Oh, no. Well, notes is still there, which I kind of still haven't understood to this day. Um, yeah, I mean, I think that there's uh, stuff that, that people have questions about or suggestions, but, you know, it's not really been very well communicated on how to use them. Yeah. Yeah, it will. And, and I will just communicate it here. It, if you read the terms of service uh, and in the privacy policy, uh, at least the privacy policy, I'm not sure if it's in the terms of service, but uh, I know the privacy pro- policy does uh, uh, have links to their support system. Oh, yep, it's in the terms of service too. Um, support at growlerapp.com. Yeah, it's an email address. Yeah, uh, there is, yeah, everything is support at growlerapp.com. So uh, that's that's the way to contact them if you have any questions, want to give us some feedback, uh, what have you. But it is there in the terms of service and their privacy policy. Um, so... so- one of the last things I wanted to kind of talk about and just ask real quick, Damon, was because you went to North American Bear this past weekend, or actually this very weekend. Um, was the app used, like, by the event? Was yeah. it, like, you know, where they do shouts and that kind of stuff? Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. So, 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 well, let me rephrase before I go say that. All right. <laughs> let me, let me say I... this. It's probably an expectation that some party bottom pig Use the shout app over the weekend. It was well, like room such and such, doors unlocked. No, 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 no. Actually, no one did that. Or unfortunately, or I'm, unfortunately. I'm I mean, my someone. Pearls. What? A couple of people <laughs> did the whole like flash and showed off their their private pictures, but that's all they did. But um, so looking through my, it wasn't the app. The event itself did not use it, but um, Adam has in the past, um. I know when he's been here, because he's been here to Cincinnati, I think probably he's been in Louisville, he's sent out shouts representing North American Bear or World Bear Weekend, because he you know, kind of wins both. Uh, but um, a couple of the uh, vendors slash um, um, entertainments, uh, not entertainment, educational, excuse me, aspects of the event did send shouts out every once in a while. So, you know, it's, they were being used, just not nearly as much as was before. Um, I know a few days before the contest, I actually got a response, a message from one of the vendor mart, um, people in the vendor mart indicating that they're going to be there and like hoping to see you there kind of thing. So, you know, but I had agreed, to, I had already marked that I was going to the event. So, of course, they're going to just send it out to all these people. So, it's entirely possible. I don't know if that is possible, actually. Can you actually? Yeah, and say- actually, to, to address one of your concerns from earlier, uh, Gary, about having your stuff in your profile, uh, I, I believe it's more of don't be, like, actively advertising but if it's just in your profile saying hey i have this if you'd like to talk to me great because uh it, so it's not like broadcasting um or, or individually broadcasting like the shouts because you pay for them uh that's uh considered as okay it's just uh if you're doing it in the unpaid route and just like randomly shooting messages to people to advertise your services but if you say hey i'm here if you want me I don't, I, I, based off of what I'm reading here, I don't think that's like active advertising. That's just saying, this is something I do. This is something about me. Well, so it it wasn't so much about that that I was concerned about because I already have friends that professionally Mm. like are self-employed and they have their own business. And so they kind of skirt or dance the whole, like having a personal profile and yet listing their business or whatever and so you're not allowed to have logos and blah 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 and all this kind of crap right. and i understand that like like the platform is not meant to be an advertising service that said though 
I think there's a distinction of difference about like listing something, right. but not many people I think really list what their profession is like specifically, but I know that for some people they do. And it's mostly because it could be a benefit to people who are in the community. And that was more the, the angle that I was thinking about because previously I'd never really considered that because none of my previous jobs were things that I wanted to list on there. I don't think it was important, but now as a individual who represents an entity and my job duties are to be assisting individuals that's where like i had this thought the very first week i was like we're gonna pay for my profile like how does that work like and i was like that gets to be a sticky situation because then does that mean like i only use the app in a professional capacity hmm lots of things to think mm-hmm. about yeah so I, yeah, I, haven't, I, think I haven't discussed that with them yeah if you it, if you're just adding it on to your regular pers- just personal thing, I don't think that's that should be a, a big deal or anything uh, for them. But it's when you're using it specifically as a p- business profile that's that's a no no. Understood. Mm. Mm. So lots of things to consider. Um, mm. I'd be curious to know what people have to say about it. You know that whether they you know, decided to storm the Bastille and, you know, burn down the, the whole thing. <laughs> or if they just kind of, meh, didn't really care or perhaps agreed and then said, oh, shit. And then was like, well, oh, well, you know, like. Yeah, I mm-hmm. I just feel like it's not as. There's a deal. I just don't think it's as big of a deal as people are thinking. People have questions. They want answers. There needs to be work done. Yes. All of this. Um, your concerns are completely valid. It's just, I don't think it's like four star alarm thing. Delete your profile if you want to. That's, you know, you do, you boo. Um, but uh, I don't feel like there's a need to. Uh, Growler's just going to go on as it is. Yes, there's problems. Um, but but uh, as the internet age evolves and scammers <laughs> evolve they're they're gonna uh, these it's it just an everlasting war of um trying to work out these issues so yeah i, I, mean, I mean i would love them to to see about um you know starting fresh on growler and at least uh the app wise and being in somehow migrating to a, an updated system that's that's more modern or modern look something better to integrate the ads for us free users um because hey uh, servers don't come cheap <laughs> and especially considering a, a business business owns owns the app now um they're gonna want to want to get some money so hey i'm okay with ads because hey i'm not paying you <laughs> if i'm paying you yeah, I don't want ads, but um, mm-hmm. it, yeah, there's problems, uh, and a lot of these just they sometimes they just need time to resolve to try to figure out how to even resolve them. Um, it, as I said, this app has probably just been the same base code updated, getting updates to the app, which can possibly cause issues from their adding stuff and it's just not fully optimized quite right because they keep adding stuff but then things start to conflict and and issues arise there's more people using it uh more scammers are coming around around to it and figuring out ways to to get around any of the blocks uh for the scams uh which is Mm -hmm. I, i know that's one of the problems is yeah i get them too on occasion, I, I log in, I instantly get a message from somebody uh, trying to send me to a website, and I'm like, report, block. Um, it, it's uh, about patience, and hopefully the meet group will be able to to provide the resources to Growler to uh, update the app and optimize the app and mm-hmm. uh, uh, make it actually a, a better application and uh, a better environment for them and also go through their policies and facts and everything to help clarify it and get the right language for what they want. 
And I, yeah. I really think at this point in time, especially with everybody's concern about the TOS for Growler, um, they really need to go into their fact and start getting clarifica- clarification for things that, cons- that people have concerns with. Um, and it's quite possible they're not doing that yet because they're still, you know, like re-looking at, at the terms of service and being like, okay, we need to... When we updated this just recently, because it hadn't been updated in a long time, we just kind of like copy and pasted and just got up an updated one uh, based off of other things. And we need to go in and fix it to get it more customized to what Growler is. Um, Mm -hmm. So I'm more of the, everybody calm down. (laughs) Voice your concerns, but be constructive. Don't don't necessarily bring bird bridges because this still could be our app. I mean, the, from my understanding, mm-hmm. the the creators are still going to be part of it at least for now. Um, uh, so they're still there. It's just now they're getting into a place where they can get more resources, more people that can help them improve the app, and we need to trust that they will and provide your feedback as it was. I've said it so many times during this episode. Support at growlerapp.com. Voice your concerns, but be cordial. <laughs> Don't be yelling because if, if you're uh, 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 putting it in a non-constructive way, they might just blow past and be like, this is not helpful at all. Uh, just say, hey, can I get more information about such and such? I'm concerned about this. These are my concerns. Is there anything you could do to help alleviate those concerns? Could you get some clarifications? Blah, 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 blah. So up to you and what you want to do. But I really want to hopefully, my hope for this was to help alleviate the fear, uncertainty, and doubt that you have with the Growler app. But as I mm-hmm. said, if you don't, trust it at all we just pointed out here go into your profile and growler hit delete account and even email support saying hey i want to know want to make sure that you delete my information and also get a copy of what information you still have and it might take a while because we who knows what their email queue is and who they have working it so it might take some time but trust that they will will support you anyways i'm done with my rant hey um i mean great um to kind of like to say something more um i think you should definitely make sure that you're reading what you agree to every time you look at something along those lines be careful be understanding of what is going on in the world and with these apps and in general, because this is how stuff happens. And to, to, to make, you know, like it's, it's okay to be aware and to be angry and to be upset and to, you know, voice your opinions if you are not happy with how things are going and to leave if you feel you need to leave, if it is not for you. Or the changes are not for you. So, um, again, if that is a again, as Jeff kind of mentioned, that is your choice to make. Um, if you wish to delete the app or what have you, um, you know, it is a. I'm sure for Growler, it is a learning curve that they're going through. They've gone from a smaller, you know, privately owned organization to now a larger owned by a big corporation kind of thing. And everyone, I think, should pay attention and keep notice and keep watch of things that are happening. Um, And again, if you do not feel that you can agree with or are agreeing with it, then yes, by all means, delete the app. Um, Delete your account, delete the app. Delete your account, delete the app. In that order. Yes. Did you delete the the app? But your data is still there. <laughs> okay. I get it, Jeff. Thank you. Um, Just want to clarify. 
I, I'm sure. I think. Thanks. Um, but at the, at the end of the day, like that choice should be yours to make, and whatever you choose to do, you know, do it with knowledge of you know what you're doing. Like I know people are fine, probably are doing a lot, getting along just fine without using a social media app, um, and that's great. Like as I, you know, one of the things I was I was at um, NAB this weekend, and it was kind of nice in a sense to to see people actually engaging with each other in some ways as opposed to like being on their phones like there was a lot of um physical activity without going into too much detail um you know meaning like people were actually talk- <laughs> people were actually talking to each other don't get it twisted like <laughs> I was half listening to you. I'm sorry, David. All I heard was physical activity, and I was like, wait, what? (laughs) What I mean is people were actually talking to each other. There was definite, like, you know, like what I mean by physical, like, you know, activity, like with consent sometimes, um, actual, like, (laughs) you know, that's that's another show, just putting it out there. Um, but with like like actually like you know engaging and talking and touching and feeling and and um there were very fun like well for me moments of just like watching people interact and more so than I think I've seen in a couple of years with you know especially with the growler like people weren't on their phones all the time mm-hmm. so that's kind of what I mean is like it was nice to see that well, and I mean, and that's kind of why I wanted I brought up about like you going to the event and that because I know at some events in the past, Growler was a big deal. Like everybody was on it, and like all you needed to be was in a common area, and then you would hear who had the fastest internet, like who had the fastest <laughs> mobile service, because it would be like a wave around the room and you would hear the bloop, 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 you know what it was just kind of... <laughs> so and that's yeah. how you do it was a shout like you just hear like a ding you're like okay so somebody getting a message but you know like when lots of people's devices are going off or their butts are ringing or whatever you know then you're like okay there's there's somebody just sent a shout of something um <laughs> yeah so i mean that's why i asked because i was i i haven't been to an event in a while and wasn't really sure how that was looking mm-hmm. at. So and that being said, a good one to go to. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cause it was right after everything that happened somewhat. Well, not right after, but after some of the stuff that has been going down. Good deal. Yeah. All that being said, let us uh, know if you have comments or ideas. Yeah. Let, it, let us know your opinions. You can do that in plenty of different ways. Guess what? That's the end. Oh. Play ways to contact us. Let, let us know about your opinions on, on the current situation with the Growler. Uh, express your concerns. Um, you can do that on our website, comesoutloud.com. Shoot us an email, comesoutloud at gmail.com. Leave us a voicemail at 361 361- uh, see you all talk. That's 361-265-8255. You can follow us on various social media outlets such as Instagram, Facebook, Tumblr, Twitter, and of course on YouTube. At comes out loud in the appropriate place of the URL. You can join our Entourage chat where you can get notifications where we get live because I always post the link in there. Uh, and uh, many other things happen as well at tinyurl.com slash telegram dash col. You can subscribe to our Google Calendar and find out when we Hopefully I've already scheduled these shows at tinyurl.com slash calendar dash col. Um, you have to do that on a computer, but once you've subscribed to that on the on a computer, you can then use your phone to look it up. Uh, you can also uh, buy some merchandise, such as uh, the Comes Out Loud hat that Gary is wearing. Uh, I think that's the only other piece of merchandise that's currently <laughs> somebody's wearing. I yeah. Had a, I had a Comes Out Loud sweatshirt on it earlier. So. Um, and various other accoutrement uh, and stuff such as a Seawell backpack. Uh, at Zazzle slash Comes Out Loud. 
I'm just going to say it that way because, as I said, Zazzle.com, Zazzle.co.uk, Zazzle.com.au, Zazzle.de. There's plenty of different ones. Just put slash comes out loud at the end. Uh, after it and you'll uh, be able to get our store in your local area anywhere around the world that Zazzle's at. Uh, you can also become a patron at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud where you can get the audio version of our uh, show um, or our VOD earlier than other people. Uh, if you get the uh, audio version and the video version through there, you also get the pre and post show if you miss it live. Live, that's at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. We appreciate you all very, very, very much, all of our patrons. You can subscribe to us or rate us on Apple Podcasts, subscribe to us, Google Play, and Spotify. You can find me anywhere in the internet as Box Set Box, Puppy Box, Cub Box, something or other. If you wish to get in contact with me, I am Theater Cub79 on most bear related sites, or you can find me as pup underscore umbra on Twitter. If you would like to get in touch with me, you can pretty much find me anywhere online or in social media as Gabber73, that's G-A-R-B-E-A-R-7-3. For those of you that are new to the show and don't know, that's a riff on my name, Gary, hence Gare Bear. It does not mean that I smoke cigars. Just saying, lots of new people checked me out <laughs> recently while I was traveling, and I realized that all the people that were checking me out that didn't say anything, y'all had a cigar in your in your face picture profile shot so <laughs> yeah, no a, intentional misleading first the bar bear anyway of your profile but anyways hey uh with that uh say good night everybody good night everybody <laughs> have a good one y'all <laughs> <laughs>